twist, I sliced my finger. <laughs> so, hello. Day of dream stage. Yeah. You know when you get so tired? that you start forgetting notes or doubting what you're supposed to be playing and then you don't really know what you're supposed to be playing even though you actually have played it a bunch of times before so this is to say sleep is very important food is also very important rest in general is um, the reason that I'm having memory gaps and also just so tomorrow is the dream stage live stream concert I build up a lot of hype so part of me is anxious uh, because I build up so much hype, but uh, I need sleep, I need food, the food, I need to eat food, and then hopefully I can get a long night of sleep to reset my entire system. Hopefully this heals. I don't know if I can play without a band-aid tomorrow. We'll see. It's 9.30 right now. I'm gonna get acquainted with the friend over there. And then we're gonna actually record for 30 minutes before we start the Dream Stage live stream concert. Wish me luck. Yeah, I think it's just because I've never done it with a professional engineer like yeah. this. And when I do it by myself, yeah, you have to that's how I do. The thing that I'm going to ask you to do today is to let all that go away. And just stay in the moment and play. Play yeah. beautiful Mozart. Yep, I'm trying to get over this like, wow, I yeah. suck that kind of mood. No, no. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like on the verge of crying. It's about 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 9 minutes until officially 11. I am nervous and I am uh, scared that by saying this, it affirms my emotion or sentiment. Yeah, I'm, I am nervous, but I hopefully will just switch off that self-deprecating voice inside of me and um, just play it. Because when I begin to doubt myself and think that I'm nervous, 
then I become nervous and then I won't do very well. So. All right, first concerto over, the A major. I had a brain fart <laughs> um, in the cadenza, the last movement cadenza. I want it to be playful and uh, the harmonies I ended up playing did not make very much sense. <laughs> I wanted to change up the beginning, but anyway, I'm gonna take a five minute break and then play the E flat. Hope you enjoyed it. There was something going on in the beginning where we had to restart after the first three minutes. Don't know what happened. Uh, hope you weren't disappointed. That's all. Ah, uh, this next concerto I grew up playing. Not playing. I grew up listening. So, I have a lot of high expectations for myself. Not that I didn't for the other one, but this one has a personal connection in history, so. Woo! Oh, I was gonna find you. Woo! We're done. Yay. Well, not not technically done, but. How'd you feel about Dream Stage? Oh, very good. Very yeah. Good. Thank you, Adam. Oh. Thank you, Eric. Woo! And thank you to so everyone. Special. And it's Woo. so exciting because we keep on we get to keep on playing right now. We're just yeah. gonna keep on going at it. Because now you know we're recording an album, so we gotta make this even better for you. So yay! Okay. Thank you. I will shut up and let you do your work. Oh, okay, I am gonna chill out while the orchestra records some of the 2D stuff, meaning only orchestral playing without me, so I can rest. And because we have another three hour recording session in two hours, two and a half hours. Also my left hand at some points uh, just went offline. <laughs> and um, yeah, but you know, Eric was super helpful. Just, I think this was my first time where I'm playing with a conductor who is, well, I think we have become friends. I have not gotten the confirmation from him whether we are friends or not. But I changed the mask because the black one I had was just sweaty. <laughs> um, yeah, I've never played with a conductor who's also a friend, a very easy going um, person to work with, artist to work with. Editing Tiffany here. I'm almost done editing and I realized that not once, not once, did I say that I had fun. All I was doing was just being incredibly self-conscious and critical because I was completely in work mode, recording mode, I must play well. But if you watched my livestream concert, you probably could tell I saw some comments also that I had a lot of fun that I was incredibly relaxed and just had a lot of fun playing the piano. It was just too much for me to film and vlog and also be in that world of being a musician recording. So sorry, I just, uh, I didn't want you to think that I didn't have fun. I did. I just didn't say it on camera. Thank you so much for watching, for staying up super, super late to watch. It really meant a lot to have you be there with us live so thank you thank you i hope you're excited for my album with eric and i hope you will just be super enthusiastic about it when it comes out you will hear me post about the release dates and all of the stuff that is to come really really soon i have to oh my gosh that's so heavy to hold my camera it's been a crazy crazy just crazy days leading up to this Dream stage live stream. I felt like I tried so hard to get as many people as possible to join us, and I am very glad that that did happen. And that I've been scrolling through Instagram messages so far, and it seems like a lot of you enjoyed it. So, yeah. Woo! It means a lot to have your support. Okay, be kind, keep striving. Maybe a bit more, you know, energetic when you're striving, but I'm tired now, so thank you. Oh, well, hello. Welcome back to Under the Piano. So I was editing this vlog and I realized that for anyone else who wasn't me or maybe who wasn't my friend, you would not have understood why I was so nervous. So I thought I would go on Instagram and ask you for questions that you would like me to answer about this Dream Stage livestream concert so that I could better explain to you my 
get ready with me process because what you have saw so far is that I was incredibly nervous. That's pretty much it. But I didn't explain to you why because I was caught up in the moments. I was just full on work mode, music mode. And so that's why you also saw me filming with my phone <laughs> a lot for this vlog. So um, here is the spontaneous under the piano Q&A session. Woo! First question, is it hard to play with our audience physically in the hall with you? Different atmosphere, acoustics? I knew you were there. I knew you were watching at home and I felt that you were there. And I knew that there were a lot of excitement and anticipation for this. I knew that you had made the effort to join me at a time that might not be convenient for you. So it wasn't like I was playing by myself in the empty hall, like you saw my practicing just, I guess, the last vlog. The energy was still there, obviously, it's a little bit different than an uh, in-person live audience. You don't hear just ordinary sounds that you would hear of, you know, a lot of people breathing in the room or hall with you. But because I was playing with an orchestra, I basically had an audience there because we had to listen back and forth to each other in order to communicate and make music together. So it felt like I had a live audience, both the fact that I knew you were there on the internet, but also physically there were people watching me. <laughs> and also when I was playing my own core, the Blue Danube, they were just on stage looking at me. So, you know, I had an audience essentially. <laughs> Acoustics wise, it was a lot better to have the orchestra with me because they helped absorb a lot of the clapback that I heard when I was just playing by myself alone. Play one note, I hear that, <laughs> you know? Speaking of Blue Danube, what were your thoughts while playing Blue Danube? It was the huge musical risk that I mentioned on my Instagram post, I believe. So the story is that I was really excited about this project, the secret project that I've been working on with Eric, and I haven't told anyone except for my Patreon patrons, I believe. So I was just getting really excited, and when I'm excited, I like to play waltzes. And it's a piece that Fianna Philharmonic plays every year in the New Year's concert, so it's December, it's that kind of music, and I really like Blue Danube. But the problem was I had not practiced or played this piece, or actually I've never performed this piece ever. The last time I touched it was eight years ago or something like that, so I didn't know if I could just pick it back up within a week. <laughs> I ended up doing it anyway because I loved that piano I picked at the factory so much. I had also basically grown attached to the piano, having spent a few days before practicing on it and also rehearsing and recording on it. So I was really happy essentially. I didn't have any external thoughts per se, but I was just really into playing and waltzing with a piano that I love and doing something that I love, which is playing music that to me, was the reason why I enjoyed it so much. If you're still confused about what I'm talking about, recording, what? That probably means that you missed the Dream Stage concert. And for those asking why you cannot buy tickets to watch later, it's because of me. And it's also because of something logistically that I just don't have the answers to yet. So please don't blame Dream Stage. Dream Stage did offer the option for us. I am tied up and I can't talk about it but I will let you know if I know anything. But now everyone knows, or at least you're going to know after watching this. I've been making an album. Whoa, so during that week, I filmed a lot of behind the scenes, which I'm excited to share with you, but it's gonna have to come out in 2021. Basically, Eric was the one who was like, let's play together and then let's make a recording together. So it just kind of snowballed into, you know, a bigger and bigger thing rather than just a one-off performance on Dream Stage. And it's been very exciting. I have never recorded with an engineer like this and it was incredibly exciting. I will tell you more in 2021, but all I can tell you now is that there are tracks on there that you have been waiting for me to upload to Spotify, you will be very excited. And then there will be the two Mozart concertos, but it will not be straight from the performance. It'll be even better. And then there will be two other pieces that I have never played before, but it was really fun to learn and play with Eric. So that's all I'll tell you now. In the meantime, if you want to show your enthusiasm for our album, please go follow us on Spotify. It will help us to gain momentum when we do release things. And because I am basically non-existent on Spotify, it would help me a lot. So if you want to show your support, 
that away. It will be a physical CD release as well, but uh, Spotify is the only action that I can ask you to do at the moment. I will tell you when I know more. Okay, back to your questions. Did you struggle with playing with an orchestra, you know, after a whole year of playing alone? <laughs> In the beginning, I was a bit nervous because it's very different for me to hear the orchestra live. Yes, and you will see my reactions from the very first rehearsal in 2021 when I released the behind the scenes of my recording process for this album. You will see. The answer is yes. But the reason I overcame that struggle was mostly because of Eric. So, hope you're excited for our album. How did you manage all the things at once? like practice and that secret project and everything. Something that no one knew until now is that all of the Dream Stage ticket revenue was going to go to the recording budget and the expenses. So to everyone who has bought tickets and donated tickets for the giveaway, thank you so much. You have made this recording album possible. But we wanted more people to join because the $25 ticket price was kind of high for some people. So we wanted to lower it so that we could have as many people as possible to join us. And because, you know, play Mozart concertos on his anniversary was also very special. And we just want the most amount of people possible to join us alive. It was just really stressful extremely stressful. So not only did I ask Dream Stage to lower the ticket price from 25 to 15, I also asked them to make something completely just for us, which is the Dream Code Tiffany giveaway. No other artist has this, so I was the one pushing, asking, please, please, you have to do this for us because it's gonna be crazy and I cannot be the middle person getting all the ticket codes then sending them to you and then it was just like, I cannot be involved in this. So please do something that's super easy for everyone involved. So because I was so pushy to them, I really needed to show that I had a reason, which was that a lot of people were gonna buy tickets and were gonna give away tickets. So I was really counting on you showing your support, which you did, a lot of you did. So thank you. You might be wondering how many people bought tickets and how many people watched it. I'm not allowed to tell you. But what I can tell you is that we doubled the view count, actually more than doubled the view count from the previous live stream concert. So thank you. I was just doing so much. I've never done so much for the lead up to it. I was blah, going crazy and uh, well, I think it was all worth it. And it seems like you enjoy the concert. So that's all that matters. It's just, a lot, like so much, so much to handle. All right, last question. How did you overcome stage fright? I was incredibly nervous. I was nervous that I would not play well, that people would not enjoy it or were disappointed because I felt like there was certain expectations for me and I needed to deliver, not even about the ticketing part, but on the musical part. And I had high expectations for myself I also have not played Mozart concertos in eight years, something like that. Maybe even more, nine years. Eric is a new collaborator that I have just met through the internet, <laughs> through the Music Never Sleeps uh, live streaming marathon that you might have seen earlier in the year. So I really wanted to play my very best and I felt like I was not playing my very best the day before, the night before when I was super tired, the clip that you saw. Also, I have never drilled and start and stop and start and stop and start and stop and start and stop so much playing a piece or playing pieces from a program the night or the day before the concert. I'm happy that I had that experience and I definitely felt like it was good to push my limits, but it was really unusual because I went from, you know, doing nothing <laughs> to doing so much within four days. So I was starting to lose confidence when you start and stop and start and stop something so much. You start to question what world am I in? Am I doing the right thing? I keep forgetting notes because I was super tired. So yeah, I was freaking out the night before. I was still freaking out the morning off. So I have to give credit to Eric for being super positive the entire time, even when I was kind of a wet towel and like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired, I'm not doing well. He was always super, you know, let's do this, we can do this, let's push. Also to Adam, the audio engineer, 
the sound was super amazing and he was giving me the pep talk that you saw earlier in the vlog, which helped a lot. He's worked with amazing artists, really like the top classical musicians. So to have his support was really important also. And yeah, and to my friends also who try to give me motivation and also the confidence and ultimately it was also the fact that i loved that piano and i was just telling myself i love this piano i love playing i love doing this because this is the job that i wanted yeah it was a combination of having positive people around me and also the fact that it was my passion when i started playing the nervousness just kind of wasn't there i wasn't thinking about it and uh, I think I overcame it by not thinking about how nervous I was. I was just like there to play. Kind of hard to explain, but I tried. Anyway, now this is the true end of this vlog. Thank you so much for watching and for showing your support. Be kind, keep striving. Keep striving. Okay, bye. <laughs>